Listen, I, I, I said this uh, leading up to the game. You know, th this is the best rivalry in all of college basketball. And I wholeheartedly believe that. You know, people talk about you have Duke, Carolina. You know, you have obviously UK, Louisville. Um, but there's, there's, there's not a more unique uh, rivalry than this game. I mean, you have two incredible programs right here in the city of Cincinnati. And, you know, our, our guys know what this game means to all of our former players. We have a million former players here. And whether I saw Walt McBride, I've seen C.J. Anderson, Edmund Sumner, um, Tim Stainbrook, Matt Stainbrook, again, just how much this game means um, to all of our former players, our alumni base, our guys have a great understanding of that. I thought going into the game, you know, a couple, you know, UC uh, posed a couple of different challenges. I thought, number one, you know, they're, they're a really good defensive team. I mean, Coach Miller has them playing really hard. They're big. They're feisty. They're disruptive. They block a lot of shots. Um, and we knew it, was gonna, it could be hard to score at times against UC. That's, that's what, again, they played, they've had a really good schedule. They've beaten some really good teams, been in some close games. We knew that that could be a struggle for us kind of going into it. And we had to keep the ball moving. You know, we, we finished with nine turnovers on the game, uh, which was a huge advantage for us. That was something that we've been really focused on. Um, in practice and in every game. It's kind of been our Achilles heel to this point on the offensive end. I thought our guys did a great job of making great decisions around the rim. Um, and then on the other end, you know, we wanted to mix up our defenses. We wanted to play man. We wanted to do a little bit of press, back a little bit of zone. Um, you know, I, again, I, I, uh, I thought our guys did a great job of, of throwing them off a of rhythm on, on the offensive end. The, the, they're a really good rebounding team. Like I said, I, you go back to their size and, and just their toughness. They play really, really hard. Um, I thought we battled on the glass. Again, they got a few too many for me, but, um, but it is what it is. But getting really proud of our guys. You know, Paul Scruggs, I thought he set the tone for us early on in the game. Um, he's just a warrior. He's a winner. He's a winner. So proud of him. Um, he, he again – how much this game means to him and how much Xavier means across his chest, man. He just, he's a Xavier guy through and through. And then to see Jack Nungy um, have, have success, man. It, I'm sure all you guys know how much adversity he's been through in his, in his life. And just to see him have success he's having here at Xavier, man, just honestly just makes me smile. So really happy for him. But good win for us. But, again, it's like I told our guys, man, enjoy this one. This is a heck of a win. But at the same time, this, we got a lot more of the season left here, starting with Moorhead State next week. Travis, why do you think Jack was able to have that type of an impact tonight? We've seen him step up in big games already this year, but uh, what was it tonight that, that specifically stood out? Um, what, what stood out to me was just his composure. Adam, just his composure. He's just calm, cool, and collected. He's the same guy every single day. He's the same guy. And it, listen, he, he's, he's played in big college basketball games. This is his first shootout, but he's played in big ones. Um, he's just steady. Our guys trust him on both ends of the floor. He can shoot the ball, which I thought posed some problems for them, right, for a guy like Ado, who's, who's an incredible shot blocker, who wants to stay around in the paint. A lot of their bigs want to stay around in the paint. You know, Jack's skill set, uh, we really try to utilize, and I thought that threw UC out of uh, – in, in a little bit of flux on the, on the defensive end. So not surprised, man. He rebounded the heck out of the ball. He just plays with that, that, that composure and poise. Reminds me a little bit – I saw Matt Stainbrook. Stainbrook used to have that, right? It's like when he caught the ball – feels like everything just stops. Everything's slow motion. That's Jack. Travis, West said that he felt your switching to the zone defense early kind of threw them out of sync and then switching up your defenses. In the Oklahoma State game, you kind of wait until the second half to spring that on them. Tonight, you used it a little more throughout the game. What was your strategy going in in terms of using that zone? Yeah, I'd say a couple things. You know, number one, Colby Jones got a couple quick ones. I mean, he only played a minute and a half. And, and probably, you know, he's one of our best players, man. He's been tremendous. He's playing like an all Big East level player. Um, he had two fouls in a minute and a half. And I just felt like, man, if they're going to call it that tight, we better play a little bit of zone. Uh, we had played a little bit earlier than I wanted to, but it worked. So we kind of would, you know, go zone press back to zone. And then we'd sprinkle in man. And then we kind of, out of timeouts, change it up just to continue to kind of throw them off rhythm. Uh, Travis, obviously, with you, you said you having not having Colby for too much of the game. You got some really big plays from Dwan and Adam, kind of filling in those roles. 
Uh, can you talk a little bit about just Dwan's playmaking ability? I mean, he had six assists against Ball State and four tonight. Just where he's grown so much as far as like the passing game. Yeah, he had four assists, one turnover. I think Paul had five assists, one turnover. So between our two point guards, it's nine to two. You're going to win a lot of games if you do that. Uh, Dwan was tremendous. And I, I've said this before. Listen, the strength of our team, what makes our team so unique, is we have more than five starters. Dwan could easily start. Listen, he, he's a tremendous defender. He guards the ball. He's a ball hawk. He keeps the ball out of the, out of the paint. He makes plays for others. He's athletic. He's tough. He's a Xavier guy. So, again, I'm not shocked with his development and, again, how he's playing. I mean, he's a great player. Coach, I'm, I'm not sure that I heard you perfectly, but during shoot-around earlier today, you said that you were looking for a 3-0 and day today between Summit, yeah. Country Day, and Xavier. You got two wins already today from Summit? Yeah, you know, so it's it's funny, you know. Thank God they uh, they work the schedule around uh, our our main schedule here. Obviously, this is my main job. Let's make that very, very, very clear. Um, but it is fun, honestly. Coaching the third grade team, it gives you a different pers perspective. It really does. How patient you have to be, right? And you want to and, and listen. Like what the, the the purpose of playing basketball is to have fun. Never lose. You never want to lose that. And sometimes with all the pressure that's put on all of our guys throughout the entire world, whether it's social media and all that stuff, nobody can take that from you. That's what I always tell our guys. Nobody can ever take that from you. Like, enjoy this moment. Enjoy the, the atmosphere. I mean, our fans, they're camping out at 1230. We're, we're on break right now. We're on break. And, I, and I, we, I handed out pizzas earlier. I mean, there's a line going around our arena of all of our students. They're not even in session right now. We're not even in session right now. You know, embrace it, have fun, live in the moment, man. And I thought we did that. But to get back, I know I'm going off, off the cuff here a little bit, but Winston had a really good game. We, we went 2-0 and with uh, Summit as well today, so which is good. Travis, it looked like you shared a, a nice moment with Jeremiah Davenport after the game. I don't know if that was personal or if you would be interested in sharing that, but what was that about? Yeah, you know, I, I've, I've seen Jeremiah play for a long time, um, you know, being here in the city, obviously, for a long time being here at Xavier. Um, he's improved as much as any player as I can remember. I mean, he has, and I told him that, man. He is, you could tell how hard he works on his game. Um, he's about the right things. He's a winner. He obviously played at a tremendous program at Moeller. Uh, he, he's a great player. That's why I told him. I said, man, he, he's, they're going to win a lot of games this year, and he's going to have a great season. So um, just told him to keep on working. Travis, you guys have beaten, obviously, Ohio State here, now Cincinnati here, winning big games on the big stage. How do you think you guys are handling the energy of big games, and how important is that going forward? Yeah, I, I th number one, the energy in this building is absolutely electric. If, obviously, for everybody that was here, I mean, you can feel it, right? I mean, it was, uh, it was an awesome atmosphere. That's what college basketball and college athletics is all about, is the experience. We want to create an incredible experience for the students, our fans, our players. And, and we did that tonight. Um, but I, just our leadership, you know, when, again, Paul Scruggs has been through a lot of games. He's seen everything. He has. Jack nungie has been through a lot of games. So has Nate Johnson. Colby Jones is Mr. Mr. Cool, Calm, and Collected. Never gets too high, never gets too low. So I just love the demeanor of our team. Um, and it starts with our older guys, though, for sure, with guys like Paul and Jack and Nate. <clears throat> I want to ask, um, you know, obviously Nate Johnson didn't have his best shooting day today, but really played really well defensively and obviously got some big rebounds. In a game like that where, you know, he's so well known as being a sharp shooter for you guys, how impressed are you with how he can kind of just put that pass and focus on the defensive assignment? Yeah, Nate's all about winning. He doesn't care about anything else. He doesn't. It just shows you who, is, who he is, what his character. Because a lot of people would say, you know what, hey, he had 30, scored 24. He may be the best shooter in the country. It's like, hey, your shot – that's the difference between a good player and, a, and just an average player, right? Average players, when their shot's not falling, eh, they kind of just – they don't impact the game in, in, in other ways. Nate is a tremendous defender. Uh, he impacts the game in multiple ways. Gets his nose in there, you know, and rebounds the ball, even though he's only about – he's going to say 6'4". He's probably 6'2 on a good day. Um, you know, but again, he, he, but he fights. And again, he knows it's all about winning. <clears throat> Do you have any plans tonight after this game? Adam, I'm sure you're going to be first in line up there at Dana's, aren't you? I'm sure you are. Is, Andy, maybe you. Is there a point where this just gets to be too much money to drink at Dana's? Like $3,000 will last a week or two, probably. Listen, 
No. The answer <laughs> on that, I will happily, happily go up there. Listen, we're so appreciative of, of just, again, all of our fans, and, and they, they make this place an incredible place to play. Um, again, we, we owe it to the fans. Thanks.